Hi everybody, I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Max Tegmark, who is a Swedish-American physicist, professor at MIT. You're the co-founder of the Future of Life Institute, and I know you as the one who wrote this famous letter um, earlier this earlier last year, excuse me, calling for a pause in AI. I know you're here talking about deep fakes. What is the state of your mind here at Davos? From what you're seeing, are people getting the message? Yes, actually. So seven years ago, I decided to shift my MIT research group from physics to AI because yeah. it's just so exciting. And um, it's become increasingly clear to me that uh, AI is either going to become the best thing ever to happen to humanity or the worst. And I'm very much pushing for steering it towards good. And um, what that, the, the way we need to do that is to treat AI just the same way we treat other powerful tech. You know, when you flew here, for example, did you lose any sleep about worrying your plane was going to crash? No, because of, so basically I'm from the government and I'm here to help. You think that the policy makers are the ones who are going to put the brakes on for... Well, the policy makers are going to put safety standards in place. The FAA has such good safety standards that the companies have a huge incentive to meet them as quickly as possible so they can maximize their profits, right? And that private-public partnership works great. That's why aircraft engines are just insanely reliable. They can go a million hours without failure. And, and, and in AI, we unfortunately don't have anything like that right now. The sooner we get it, the sooner we unleash all the creativity of industry and academics to figure out how to make things even more safe. I think one of the challenges, when you talk about the FAA, of course, you know, we know aviation has a deep history. We know um, how the technology works. When I hear people like Sam Altman talk about their own technology, they don't seem to even know the fullness of what it can do. So how do you regulate that? Exactly. That's precisely the crux. Such a good question. The reason jet engines are so reliable is because of mechanistic interpretability. We know exactly how it works, mm -hmm. so we can really model it. Whereas the powerful AI systems like ChatGPT4 are just giant black boxes. We have very little clue on how it works. So what my MIT research group works on is actually opening up the black box and so we can understand better how it works, how much we should trust it, and how to make it more so trustworthy. So transparency, almost what Mozilla AI is trying to do yeah, as well, right? But I think most people here are too pessimistic about how well we can do because they're stuck in this old-fashioned idea that figuring out how it works and making it more robust has to be done by people. This is actually something AI can also do. Mm -hmm. So we're developing AI tools where the, an AI looks at another AI and tries to figure out how it works, sees if it can um, simplify it, make it more, more robust, more trustworthy. And uh, you know, as soon as there are safety standards that companies have to meet, they have an incentive to go that extra step. And I think it can totally be done. Can I ask you a question? Have you talked to many people in China since we've got these parallel, if not, you know, multiple tracks of development? Yep. Are they talking about these issues too in the same way you are? Yeah, I actually, I've been, I've been uh, doing my best to make sure that the Chinese worry just as much about AI safety as we do in the West. And uh, this is definitely beginning to happen. In fact, the Chinese government was the first government to start putting in real regulations last year because they uh, start. They, they became clear to the Chinese government that um, they didn't want to lose control over China to some unelect, some tech company or something like that. And um, this is, of, of course, the way we get China to adopt all sorts of AI standards out of self-interest. Mm -hmm. And I really am very optimistic about this. If you ask, you know, why is it that China has an equivalent of the FDA for medicines? It's not because I persuaded them or the U.S. persuaded them. Because it's them. a good thing to do. Out of self-interest, they realized a lot of Chinese people were getting injured by, by sloppy manufacturing. Similarly, China never persuaded us in the U.S. to do the FDA. We did it to protect their own. And uh, it's much faster to spin up national regulation first. And once you have that, you know, People from the FDA in the U.S. love talking to the European FDA and the British. That's very true, and that's almost a sip. Can I ask you one question, Max, which is we are coming into an election year. Yeah. If you saw the Edelman Trust Barometer, there's a 40-point difference between Republicans and Democrats, yeah. with Republicans really distrusting technology, which is... And so when you look at the candidates, when you look at the discussions that are taking place in Washington on the campaign trail, are you 
optimistic that that's being incorporated? Because really, it has to start first with the lawmakers. Well, I, I think we technologists have a huge responsibility also for trust, frankly, because this is going to be the year of fake. That's why afterwards I want to make a deep fake of you so you can see just how easy it is. I am the real thing. And yes. it, 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 we're already seeing there was a big deep fake in Singapore of the prime minister. And we're going to get so much stuff like this, which is really harmful. Do you want do. more of a self-regulation no, among no, the tech no, companies? No, that's not enough. What, what, what we need to do is just go after the whole supply chain so everybody has a responsibility. We need laws banning non-consensual deep fakes that can be mistaken for real. I love satire. Saturday Night Live should be able to do all the deep fakes they want. But if it looks like the real thing and the person hasn't given their consent, it should just be illegal. And anyone who facilitates it should be liable to. This is how we battled, for example, child pornography, where, where it's not just illegal to make it, but also to distribute it and even have it. And it's not just for serving democracy either, by the way. You know, 90% of all deep fakes are non-consensual. No, I, 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 no, of course, I'm in the media industry. Yeah. We don't like deep fakes, but um, just to, when you, okay, let, I'm going to put on my policymaker hat. You're yeah. talking to me. Um, what is the actual action that should be taken now, especially at a time when there's not a lot of discussion taking yeah. place? across the floor. So there is like 90% bipartisan support in the polls for okay. banning non-consensual deepfakes. I don't know, one other issue where Republicans That's and Democrats the, yeah, you're right. agree so well. Right? So, so this, is a, this is a great, easy victory for people reaching across the aisle and just banning non-consensual deepfakes. Yeah. The sooner the better, before the election will be better than after the election. And that's also going to really help crack down on, on deepfake fraud, which is like massive. Yeah, which has had a huge impact. Anything else on your radar you want to put on ours? Because I know that you've been thinking about this for many years. You're here where it's a tsunami of AI. What's, yeah, what do you want us to think about? I think that we both need to keep our eyes on the long game, that in a few years we might get AI that's smaller than all of us, and which at which point we really have to have artificial quite, general intelligence. Yeah, and even super intelligence. And at that point, of course, we really have to have very good governance to make sure we keep it under control. But we shouldn't just gaze into the distance. We have to look at okay, what's the next play? And that, that's why I'm talking about deep fakes here. I agree. And the abuses. Everybody agrees on it. The abuses are terrible. You you probably heard, heard saw this story of this California woman, the mother who gets called up by who she thinks is her daughter panicking, saying she's been kidnapped, you know. We just, we, Same we old stop scam, that. new tools. And the right? difference is, four years ago, that was super expensive. You practically need a movie studio, right? Now anyone can do it in five minutes. And I'll deep fake you in a few minutes. And that, so I can't wait. We can win this one very easily. And, and, I, and I think politicians also deserve to get a, just a quick win, showing that they can do something bipartisan. They're going to get a lot of popularity from winning that one, and they're going to help safeguard the election. Yeah. And then, then they can build on that momentum, take on the next thing and next thing, yep. and not just obsess about gazing into the distance the whole time. And that first is the first. foundation of trust. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Yeah, exactly.